If you're a React developer and heard this React Native thing is super hot right now, then let me show you how quickly you can transition from React to React Native and why it's actually easier than you might think. Fireship recently made a 100 seconds expo video and the most popular comment was one of the most underrated technologies just quietly sitting on the mountain of its value. That comment already shows a lot, but beyond that, companies like Microsoft, Tesla, Amazon or Coinbase and even the NFL use React Native. If you're not using it yet, then it's about time. What's up Galactic friend? If you're new here, my name is Simon and I create weekly videos and tutorials around React Native. And in this video, I will answer the most common questions about React Native and show you how to get your first React Native app deployed to your device in minutes. Before we dive in, leave a quick like and subscribe if you want to dive deeper into React Native or become a pro member at galaxies.dev, my own online school to teach you everything you need to build epic React Native apps through engaging video courses, projects and our community. Why should I use React Native in the first place? Well, React Native allows you to build cross-platform apps without touching native code, or almost, more on that later. But so does Flutter or Capacitor, so why React Native? Well, first, many companies already have React knowledge and code, so it's really an easy transition for the developer. Second, React Native renders to true native components, unlike Flutter, which uses its own rendering engine for pixel-perfect design. Third, it's not just a web view around your web code, like Capacitor or over in the past, which can limit both performance and also the native app feeling. After all, almost like every big company today uses React Native. Check out my other video about these, uh, I will put a link in the description below. Speaking of big companies, you don't have to be a big company to use Posthog, the sponsor of today's video. In fact, Posthog's headline gives it already away how developers build successful products. If you haven't heard about it before, Posthog is an all-in-one suite of product and data tools like product analytics, auto capture, feature flex, A-B testing and more with session replay for React Native coming soon. I personally switched from Google Analytics to Posthog earlier this year for Galaxies.dev and I'm really glad I made the switch. The installation and configuration was super simple and finally I have an easy representation of analytics and can make sense of my data. I found it super intuitive to visualize funnels on my page or learn how people are using my website through session recordings. With a generous free tier up until 1 million events per month, that's really a lot of events, Postdoc is actually ridiculously cheap. I might still be on the free plan for galaxies after all. So, however, Postdoc has SDKs for almost all popular frameworks, including React Native. The last missing piece, Session Replays, is coming to React Native soon as well. Use the link below this video to check out Posthog and get started completely for free. Thanks again for sponsoring this video and now back to the next question. Can I start with React Native before React? Absolutely. Um, native developers come to React Native all the time with no React background. They have Swift or Kotlin background, but that doesn't really help you a lot for React Native in the first place. You will quickly pick up the important concepts and even I actually got into React by using Ionic with React and not touching React directly. However, having a React web background will make you feel at home even faster. It definitely helps, but it's nothing you need to have upfront. What framework should I use? The simple answer is use Expo. I have another video, you can check it out, but Expo is simply the recommended framework for React Native in 2024 and beyond. Just like most people on the web use Next.js these days instead of only React, yes, older apps might use React Native CLI and there's still the community CLI, but not using Expo in 2024 just doesn't make sense anymore. Do I also need to learn Swift or Kotlin? Absolutely no. I can barely navigate through a Kotlin file unless ChatGPT helps me and this is one of the selling points of Expo in the first place. You don't have to touch native code. Most of the time, don't even export or Android Studio, which are usually the IDEs for native development. At some point, your company might need to write a native module, but even then, ChatGPT and Google are your best friends for navigating that. Can I just copy paste my React web code into React Native? Mm, 
not really, at least not yet. There's a package React Streak DOM which has an idea for that, but that's more of the future and nothing that will help you right now. React Native uses the React library in many places, but the views are constructed with slightly different elements that we're gonna see in a quick demo. While you might use a div or an input on the web, you use a view or a text input component with React Native. And the reason is simple. These components render to actual native elements on Android and iOS. And this also brings us to the question, how does React Native actually work? Basically, React Native compiles your code to native element and gives you access to native APIs like the camera or context through a bridge. For example, this means you are actually using the native camera dialog when using the Expo camera package, which abstracts away the native platform code. The bridge communicating with, with native code was always like the bottleneck of React Native. Uh, and that's actually going away as the new architecture TM is introduced. So not getting too technical here, but it will improve performance by using JSI bindings and no more JavaScript to JSON conversion for messages and more direct interaction between your JavaScript code and the native side of things. What are the biggest similarities and differences between React Web and React Native? Well, let's talk about the similarities first. We got all the logic, the state, the hooks, everything from the React library itself. It's completely the same. Even components and JSX, you're gonna feel right at home. And you can also also use packages you know like React Query, ZooStand or React Hook form. And you also have file-based routing like a Next.js application and I'll explain that with a demo in a minute. Now of course there are also many differences. There's simply no HTML DOM and that's also why many packages you're used to from the web won't work with React Native. You construct the views and elements differently because we're using a different renderer than React DOM and now render with React Native. Really these are just a handful of core components you really to learn. Beyond that, there are new packages for native functionalities like uh, animations with reanimated or handling gestures with a gesture handler. The styling is only with a subset of CSS, although Native Wind makes it possible to use Tailwind CSS in the future. Access and interaction with native platform APIs happens through a bridge. That's of course completely different than what you're used to on the web. And finally, of course, the release and deployment of an application is not just putting it up on a server. You have to go through the review of Apple and Google to get your app into a real app store. Now let me show you how quickly you can get started with React Native. Simply use the Expo CLI to create a new application using npx create expo app, give it a name like my first app and use the default template which includes expo router and file based routing. Once all the dependencies are installed you can run npx expo which brings up the development server and then we can just press i to open it up on my iOS simulator and in about one minute you've gone from setting up your application to having a working application right here. I should be able to change something, so let's change this. This is the welcome page, so it should be right here. Hello video, and my application is working. Now, if you're coming from Next.js, the routing here might look a bit familiar and a bit strange. It is file-based routing. We're just using some different folders. We have layout files. Uh, we have index files for all the pages. And we can pretty much use the same logic that most projects on the web use these days to create new files and to create our folder structure, even though we're working in a native mobile application. Let's say we now wanted to use something of the native APIs like the camera. In that case, you would just install a package like this npx expo install expo camera and then you could just use the code shown by expo here as an example now there's a little problem the camera doesn't really work well in my simulator so how could i now try this on a real device the good news is that Expo has us covered. So there's the Expo Go application and here's my real phone. I can now scan this code and open this up in Expo Go. And voila, in about minutes, I have the same application connected to my device and now I am finally able to use the camera view. Welcome, this is me recording the tutorial. Congratulations, you now have your first Expo React Native application running on a real device. It doesn't matter if it's an iOS, an iPhone or an Android phone, the Expo Go application will help you to instantly have your React Native code deployed as a real application. All right, that was quick and fun, right? But do I need to learn anything else? Well, not exactly learn, but you have to be aware 
uh, that you're now working with smaller devices, uh, really way smaller devices like phone uh, or tablets. Beyond that, code has to be really performant for all the devices. Uh, there are many very old Android devices and the whole process of signing and submitting apps can be daunting, but once you've done it the first time, it's not that scary anymore. And things like EAS make it really, really e easy to build and update your application. Now, at this point, we can answer another funny question. That is, can React Native also be used for other platforms? And this is where it becomes even funnier. If you're a React Native developer, you can by now build actually good web applications as well. That's what usually called universal apps. However, if you don't like Expo Web, you can also use a mono repository approach and share parts of your app between Next.js and React Native to get like the best of both worlds. I made a video on these setups, including the T3 Turbo stack as well. On top of that, you can build Mac and Windows apps, which perform actually better than Electron. By the way, Microsoft is pushing this package forward so you can build performant Windows applications. And beyond that, you can also target TV apps, Amazon is pushing that package forward and there's also support for Vision OS and I think you can also develop for Xbox. So you can cover pretty much every platform you want with React Native. All right, this hopefully gave you an impression of how easy the transition from React to React Native is and why it's becoming a central technology for big and small companies. Same can be said for today's sponsor, Postdoc. Go check them out using the link below this video and get started completely for free up until 1 million events per month. Postdoc is the all-in-one suit for your tools, just like Expo is for React Native and Postdoc has session replay coming for React Native pretty soon. I'm sure we're going to talk about that again in an implementation. Let me know in the comments and meanwhile, check them out at posthook.com. Understanding React Native opens up tons of opportunities for you as a developer and companies alike. You can reuse code, target multiple platforms and build native performant apps. Even if you heard that Flutter or Swift UI or whatever are the future, React Native has become a bulletproof technology supported by a vibrant community, including biggest companies in the world. Well, if you want to get started with React Native today, check out my free videos here on YouTube or become a pro member on my platform galaxies.dev where I teach React Native with in-depth video courses, projects and support through our community with the shortcuts to get you to your goal. So let me know what are your thoughts on React Native? Let me know in the comments and check out the video I pinned up here if you want to see what other companies are building with React Native. Of course, stay subscribed and I'll catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding, Simon.